So uh, crews were dispatched here about 10.30 this morning, so we've been on scene about five hours now. And obviously, you can look behind me, very large fire. We're, we were, we're estimating this to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 260,000 square feet of a building that was involved. As far as I know, it's all been contained within that 250,000 square foot kind of warehouse footprint. I think we were able to contain it to just that building. I know on the northwest side, Mel K Electric was a very close exposure. We were able to keep it from getting into that business, and I believe we were able to keep it from any of their equipment as well. Uh, Escalade Sports was, I believe it's called Escalade Sports, was to the north. We were able to keep it away from there, which was a concern. So um, we're kind of taking this as a, as a success, just like we did on Morton Avenue a few months ago. So um, a few things to mention. Early on in the fire, there were um, about 10 to 12 semi-trailers with about 40,000 pounds of plastic pellets in each of those trailers, and fire was starting to impinge upon those trailers. Tri-State Towing and Recovery, were able they were able to come over with one of their tow trucks, and I believe they had a couple other trucks that assisted with pulling all those trailers away from the building to keep those from becoming involved. That would have been a very huge mess had they been in, uh, involved as well. So, very big thank you to Tri-State Towing for getting involved in doing that. Um, We have had 14 other fire departments assist us in this. I believe it has been made to a four alarm fire. So we have had 14 other departments. Four of our Vandenberg County departments have been here. We have also had departments from Gibson County, Posey County, Warwick County, and Henderson County, Kentucky to come over with tanker trucks, which are trucks that carry at least 1,000 gallons of water or more to help us with a little bit of our water supply issues which when we get to a fire that's this massive, our flow rates of water far exceed any possible capability of just a residential or a, uh, a typical city water supply. I mean, it's just, it, it's just a, it's a massive undertaking whenever we do that. So them coming in with their tankers and doing some water shuttles for us has definitely helped uh, here towards the end wrap this up and, and continue to put water on this fire. Um, right now, Involved, we've had we have the EMA here. They're using some of their drones to assist us with the overall assessing of the situation, flying around, helping our incident commanders make decisions on where to position trucks throughout the fire. Center Point Gas and Electric have been here controlling utilities. The water department has been working with us, identifying different water grids for us to connect to to help us with that water supply issue. Um, the ATF is on scene. The state fire marshal is on scene. The state fire marshal's office will take over the lead investigation in this fire. Right now, we're basically, our investigators, there's really no way they can get in to even remotely come up with anything as to how this started. So we're just kind of going to wait until they get this thing um, darkened down a little bit more until we can really start that investigation. And I believe the ATF, or uh, the state fire marshal's office will have more people here on Monday morning. So, um, other than that... Oh, uh, we also have the Red Cross on scene. They're helping uh, keep our firefighters hydrated. They brought some food. We also have heard that uh, Chick-fil-A and Mission Barbecue are also going to bring some food down here to help, help feed our firefighters and keep them going because uh, just like Morton Avenue, we're going to be here for a while. That's understandable. Uh, I think we got a lot to talk about here, so I may as well jump in. Comparatively, just because, you know, it happens so close, can you talk a bit about the comparison between Morton and over here in Tennessee? Well, I believe the estimates for the Morton Avenue warehouse fire square footage wise for the overall warehouse was approaching a million square feet. So this would be somewhere around, what, 25, 30% of the same size overall area. So comparatively, this is a smaller fire. If you notice, there's a lot more dark smoke, a lot more black smoke behind us. We aren't 100% sure, but we're believe, we believe there was uh, plastic pellets or something like that, and that would lead lead us to believe that that is true based off of the semi-trailers that we pulled away from the building uh, early on in this fire. So we think there was some plastic in, in the building that has caused uh, this to be just a little bit harder to put out than uh, Morton Avenue. Now, to say how much harder, I don't know. Uh, we're five hours into it. I'm not sure whenever we kind of decided that the Morton Avenue was really, I mean, it's contained. Right now, this is contained, but there's still a lot of active fire in the center. And 
uh, along with that as well, the scene where the uh, trailers were actually being pulled out by the towing company, uh, a eyewitness told me that it was a pretty close call on some of those trailers. Can you talk a bit about that? Oh, yes. Uh, fortunately, those trailers that were backed up to the building, the doors on the trailers were actually closed. So as that fire was approaching those trailers, the doors kept that fire from going into the trailers and catching those those pellets on fire. So as we pulled probably the last five or six trailers out, the doors on the back of the trailers were either scorched or were burning. So when we pulled those away, our, our crews were able to spread the, the doors down, get that put out. We opened the doors, looked inside. The plastic pellets were not involved in any way, so we just took them and parked them in another yard away from the building. So we were very fortunate on that, that the doors were closed. Also, I understand if you don't know the answer to this, but I've heard uh, some rumblings that there may have been two individuals detained in relation to this. Can you speak to that? I, I don't know anything about that right now. Uh, that would be a PD question for them. Uh, if anybody was detained, obviously we don't we don't detain people. So. That's understandable. Yeah. I, I knew that was a long shot, yeah, but they yeah. wanted me to ask Sure, that. absolutely, yeah. Um, Doing your job. Do you have anything you would want to ask? Yeah, so uh, East Tennessee, 600 block. Obviously, you guys were spraying that out of precaution. Were those folks evacuated, um, and are they back in their homes? You're talking about the homes? Yes. Yeah, the, across the street? Yep. I don't think we evacuated anybody. It's just that whenever the, the wall along here collapsed, the radiant heat off of that was very great, and I think we did notice that a, a little bit of that vinyl siding was starting to kind of warp a little bit, so we, we did have crews there just kind of wetting those houses down making sure that we didn't get any kind of exposures catching fire but I, as far as them being in really any danger I don't I don't really think they were and our I'm guessing your folks are going to be doing the same rotational thing that they did during Morton Avenue, just kind of yep. one one company coming in, another leaving, taking rest. It, it will be a few. I mean, again, if you look behind me and see the amount of smoke and stuff that's still going in, deeper inside that structure here, I believe there was a little bit more um, materials that would burn, whereas the Morton Avenue warehouse, we believe, was pretty much vacant when it when it burnt. So that, that that's just a little bit of the difference between the two. And then last time we spoke, I know you mentioned that it's unknown at this time if anyone was inside. Is there any speculation to believe that there was anybody inside? You know, again, no speculation whatsoever to, to for, for me to report to you. We haven't had anybody approach us saying somebody's missing and that somebody thinks somebody's in there. So uh, with anything like that, yeah, we, we absolutely have no way to, no way to know. And I know that um, when we last spoke, obviously, I've seen that 60 people are out of power. I know last time we spoke, you were going to go to the north side, uh, check out kind of the spread of everything. Is there Are there any, like, points of interest over there that would be of concern for this fire to spread to? Oh, no, no, no. I think the, the amount of distance between where the fire is still burning and any other closer structures is, is great enough. And we have trucks in between uh, the, the uh, uninvolved structures and then this warehouse itself. So as far as being concerned about spreading anywhere I, at this time, I, I really don't anticipate that being any kind of an issue whatsoever. And then um, as far as containment goes, last time we talked, um, not 100% sure. Um, is there any update to whether or not this fire would be considered contained? We haven't really officially said, but I, I'm fairly confident that, yes, it is contained to the actual warehouse footprint of its of its own. So I don't think at this time we have any concerns of it spreading to any other buildings uh, adjacent to it or anything like that. Is there anything you want people in the um, nearby neighborhoods to just know, maybe like avoiding the area, stuff like that? Well, obviously avoiding the area because we will have trucks here for a couple of days or longer just doing exactly. I mean, this is really the people in Evansville, unfortunately, should be very familiar with this because of what happened just a few short months ago. So this area will be involved. Fire trucks will be here throughout the days and nights for the next coming days, uh, continuing to do what we're doing here. So yes, avoiding the area. Please drive carefully if you're in the area for the people, the residents that live in this area. We are very sorry. We know we've trapped a few people into their homes with our hoses laying in the streets and things like that. But unfortunately, there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. Once those hoses are laid in the street, we can't shut them off to quit flowing water. You can't drive over the top of them because they're so large, and, and it's, it's just, that's just the way it is. And one young lady I was just speaking to said that the um, the Mets bus route around here was closed down. So um, uh, the Stringtown route, I believe, was closed is not running here is that true if you know well i mean obviously if the streets closed, the bus can't drive up the street either so i mean I'll, they'll make a detour around this general area that's closed off and would have to go a different direction yes, yes. Thank you.
Well, I want to talk a little bit more finessely just because I know a lot of people are going to make this comparison, so I could get to nip at the bud. Uh, is there really a point to be comparing this fire to any other fire? Um, you know, uh, to say any other fire, I don't really know, but I mean, you know, any large fire like this, comparatively to the Morton Avenue warehouse, just the magnitude of it, obviously, we call in a lot more trucks, a lot more personnel. And, and again, this fire here, we, we reached out to our county departments to, to ask for their help as well, which in the history of the fire department, um, I don't know that that's ever happened before. If it has, it's been a long time ago. So we're, we're very thankful that we have our, our other firefighters, fire departments in, the, in the, our county and the adjacent counties that are willing to come in and assist us with such a large fire.